cancer support. NATO is defending the pace of its airstrikes and signing concern over the use of human shields by Colonel Gaddafi's forces. All this as a former U.S. lawmaker is on the ground in Tripoli aiming to broker a ceasefire with the Libyan leader. But is a transition favoring Gaddafi's son enough for the U.S. and his allies? Joining me right now is Regina Durgham, a senior diplomatic correspondent for the London-based Al Hayat newspaper and an MSNBC analyst. Regina, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, as you know, we were just learning from the Associated Press that there is a, evidently a three-page letter that Colonel Gaddafi has written to President Obama saying, please stop the no-fly zone and the air attacks. I is he getting a little weak? Is he now feeling the pain of so many days of air attacks? I think it is a sign of weakness, and I think it's also a gimmick, because when you write such a letter at such a time with such a language, it's really quite a gimmick, unless he's absolutely not in touch any longer with reality. And uh, as to the NATO uh, strikes, they have uh, resumed, and I think the rebels were absolutely right in being upset with NATO le leadership for having pulled back at a time that it was most critical for them to advance. And a footnote for our viewers, uh, we may have to jump out and go to the House leadership should they be speaking there in the midst of a meeting right now Regina of course you and I will continue on this uh, also in this note uh, the way Gaddafi had reached out to President Obama according to what the AP is saying is they used words such as our son uh, excellency we hope you win in 2012 what's the view of President Obama from Colonel Gaddafi well he, of course from the point of view of uh, Gaddafi he is our son meaning that he's the older the elderly that he's he's been there for much longer than the newcomer to, uh, to uh, policy making and to governing. Of course, he stayed in power for 42 years, and in fact, he feels that he is entitled to speak like this to President Obama. Probably also, from his point of view, he's trying to say that you come, your background is from us, you are from an African son, uh, uh, the son of Africa, your father was an African. But bottom line is that Gaddafi is trying to get attention. Mm. And he's trying to and find appeal to President Obama. Yes, and okay. he, but of course, President Obama's answer is that there's a ceasefire to be taken place first, and then we talk. But the opposition, or the, let's say the transitional uh, government that uh, you know the rebels, if you want to call them, or the opposition, they are willing to talk. They are willing to talk not about Gaddafi staying. They're willing to talk about the conditions after he establishes the principle of leaving. Regina, on that note that you bring up then, Congressman Weldon is it now in Libya to try to discuss the issue of Gaddafi stepping down. But is the United States as a whole, is the White House behind this idea? I don't think so. And I think if it is, then it's a mistake because it's a very confusing message and it's a very dangerous one at that. There is an envoy by the United Nations and he is, will be also the envoy of uh, practically the security Council, all members of the Security Council, and if the United States wants to get a message across to Gaddafi, like, you know, we can talk about something, mm -hmm. I think the way to do so is through the envoy, the official envoy by the United Nations, given that all of these operations are based on UN resolutions. Otherwise, I think it becomes freelancers and it becomes mm -hmm. a very confusing message, and probably it could be either misleading or encouraging both in the wrong way. All right, also talking about the United States and its involvement there in the Middle East and the Arab world, I know you are watching. Yemen. The concern, of course, right now is that as of Monday, Yemen's government saying they've withdrawn all counterterrorism efforts as they try to reallocate their, uh, so their uh, resources to fight uh, the uh, protesters. Now, the question might be out there as we look at this, will the United States intervene? This as uh, the Al-Qaeda Al now can operate, shall we say, more freely than they were able to do before. Uh, any any uh, impromptu sort of explosion if you will, in, 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 in Yemen is going to be to a great disadvantage not only for Yemen but also to the neighbors including Saudi Arabia and for the United States. The United States is strategically interested in Yemen and as you mentioned correctly, Al-Qaeda is well entrenched there. Therefore, there has to be a proactive policy. A reactive policy is a very dangerous one. A proactive one is needed in order to, uh, you know, say, to give an exit strategy for the uh, leader Ali Abdullah to leave. Uh, it's not enough to sit and say from the White House or some uh, from the State Department, go. You know, we don't want you. Qaddafi has to go. Ali Abdullah Saleh has to go. Um, Mubarak has to go. It's it's a very big statement for the President of the United States to say it has to be followed out by followed by action. This hasn't been the case with Yemen. The President has not said Ali Abdullah Saleh needs to go. That's the President of Yemen that is 
What, what is needed, however, is a very serious, uh, probably in this case has to be someone who uh, is a good negotiator, somebody, maybe this is the time for the United States to think of an envoy, if you will, to Yemen, uh, rather than uh, somebody going to Libya after Security Council resolutions have established somebody else. What does make this difference, as you know, Regida, is that there are an estimated 500 al-Qaeda fighters that are based in Yemen, and that since the counterterrorism efforts have stopped, there that more terrorist forces have moved and are going into the the area and the region of Yemen. Isn't doesn't that make then a stronger argument for the United States to become involved? In, indeed, I, I don't know uh, how. I, I, I don't think you are suggesting that there should be NATO operations in Yemen. I'm sure that you know, maybe this is probably one of the options, but I think what you meant is that there has to be a very active American role in Yemen. And you're absolutely right. There has to be a very uh, a proactive role, rather, rather than you know taking uh, uh, the, the events and then following through, because this is not the, the – in Yemen, it's not the revolution of the youth. In, Rem in Yemen, it's not, you know, the, 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 twi the Twitter and, and Facebook. Mm -hmm. It is really traditional uh, opposition, armed. Everybody is armed, and a lot of Qaeda operatives there. So therefore, there's every reason for the United States to be involved in Yemen, to try to resolve it, to try to help. Uh, you know, of course, right. uh, reform and of course dialogue, but it is also on the borders with Saudi Arabia, and then you will have a very major problem, triple effects, if you will. Yeah, on the flip side, of course, with the criticism that would come from the Arab world, should the United States become more involved in Yemen or in any of the countries in the Arab world? Thank you so much, Regida Durgan. We appreciate it uh, for your perspective today. Thank you very much. An alarming new study finding.